All right, let's get our constants, as always, from initial conditions. So our initial conditions usually you think of as your initial position and your initial velocity. Well, you do the same thing. You just calculate what those are for the normal coordinates. All right. So let's look at initial positions. So we have the Q sum. I'll put Q sum dash 0. All right, that's the Q sum coordinate and its initial value. Well, if we think about it, we had um, this is our initial position, and Q sum is um, xA plus xB minus D. Well, xA is 0, so that's 0. xB is D plus A naught, and then minus D, so D plus A naught minus D is A naught. Okay? So there's nothing sitting at the exact position A naught, but this isn't the initial position of an actual mass, it's the initial position of the normal coordinate. So it's what I said, it's 0 plus uh, d plus a naught minus d, it's equal to a naught. Right? And we could do the um, q difference naught, and that's going to be 1 minus the other, 0 minus d minus a naught um, uh, uh, plus d. Right? So it's uh, minus d plus d's cancel, it's negative a naught. All right, so it's 0, sorry, minus d, minus a naught, plus d by definition, so it's minus a naught. That's the initial value of the difference normal coordinate. And we could do initial velocities. All right, so q sum naught dot, the time derivative is 0. Right? So we are, if we wanted to take the time derivative of this, Q sum dot would just be x a dot x b dot, just the, the velocities basically. This the time derivative of that is zero. Right? So since these velocities are zero, this initial velocity is zero. These velocities are zero. This initial velocity is zero. Everything's zero. The initial values. Um, Q diff dot dot equals zero. Okay. So here's our four conditions we want to use to solve for the amplitudes and the phases of the normal modes, not the actual motion of the, of the individual masses, but of the normal modes. So let's start, since these are equal to 0, it's always a good idea to start with those. So the time derivative of q sum would be, let's see, it would be a sum times the square root of g over l. Cosine becomes negative sine of all that uh, oh, at time equals 0. So let's see, it would be um, minus a sum square root of g over l times the sine, but at time equals 0, this term is 0, so you're just left with a phase equals 0. That's using this term, and that tells us that phi sum has to be 0. Right? We don't want to make the amplitude 0 because that would be trivial. That means it's not moving. So this tells us that phi sum is 0. And to save me chalk and space, you could also do the exact same argument to show that this phase is also 0. Just take the derivative of the difference normal coordinate, and you'll find the two phases are 0. All right. And then you bring that information over here. And you say, OK, now let's do this initial condition, q sum at time 0 equals a naught. So q sum at time 0 is a sum cosine of phi sum, because time is 0. So let's see. So that's a sum cosine. Time is 0, so it's just phi sum equals a naught. But of course, we just showed that phi, that phase is 0, so cosine of 0 is 1. So a sum just equals a naught. And exact same argument if we took plug to 0 in for q difference, the phase is 0, time is 0, a diff equals minus a naught. Um, yeah, a diff equals minus a naught. So there, 
is the solution to your um, free parameters for your simple harmonic motion. And now we've solved them with our initial conditions. So we now know exactly how the normal modes move. But we want to know how the actual masses move in real space. So we'll do that next.